Hey everybody, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. I thought today I'd like to take you into my greenhouse so you can kind of see what I actually have here. It is just a small 6x8 Harbor Freight greenhouse that I bought like eight years ago. So it's been sitting around. I actually have all those original panels to it. I've never changed the panel out, although I have lost a couple during winds and had to go find them in the woods. Uh, but let's take a look in and let me just show you around and see how I've got things organized. And maybe that will help you if you do have a greenhouse and deciding how you want to lay it out or how you want to do your greenhouse organization methods. So when I put in this greenhouse, I decided to put down some blocks first to raise up the level of the greenhouse. It gives me a little extra height on the inside. And then you'll notice there that it's got these 4x4s on the bottom. And those 4x4s, I have the bottom of the frame of the greenhouse screwed in for some extra weight on it. You'll also notice that these are the twin polycarbonate style windows. And they do, over time, get pretty dirty. I need to come in here and do some cleaning on that. But there's just a simple sliding mechanism for the door. And here's what I have inside. This is simply one of those little greenhouses that you put together and has a little plastic sheath over it. And for right now, that is just gonna be pot storage. You gotta have a place to, to save those pots. I mean, these are all things I've collected over the years from uh, different uh, plants that I've purchased or plants other people have purchased, and then they give me the plants, uh, the pots that are left over. So then over here, there is a shelf that I built just out of some 1x4s, some 2x4s, a combination of things there. And it is designed basically where I can put one of these 10 by 20 flats over here. This is one that I've got with an insert that's got about, I think, 50 slots in it. You can start things in those, and then they come out like little plugs, which is cool. Then I've got these others here, and some of them have holes, if you see here in the bottom like that. And others do not have holes. We can't show you that right here, but I've got a stack of them right there. You can see how there's no holes to it. The reason I do that is so that the first layer I can fill with soil, and then the second layer will retain the water. So it's kind of like an in-pot system where I can take that hold flat completely out uh, when I don't need it in here anymore, especially when the roots are bigger. So over here you can see I've got some that I'm prepping. I've already watered it and everything. We're going to use that for some greens probably, some kale or something like that. I've got these other pots here and this is made of core. This is a coconut uh, waste product. The shells are ground up. They're completely biodegradable in time, but you can kind of see I use some of them for seed starting as well. Now this one's really dirty, so I need to get this cleaned. But you can see this is a little humidity dome that you can get that fits onto these 10 by 20 flats. And it will go just right over top of that. And that'll keep the humidity in. And once things are germinated and starting to grow, you can pull those off and then just water normally. But that's great for doing your seeds and getting them started. Which I'll do a video on that here before too long, so stay tuned. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and all that fun stuff. Now on the other side of the greenhouse, I've got these other shelves which are made of two by fours and these are old balusters that came from my parents old deck so i repurposed them and turned them into some slats for the shelves over here and once i've got things started on one side of the greenhouse i'll bring them over to the other side to grow on a little bit more of course the top shelf shades out the bottom shelf a little bit but sometimes that's a good thing because you don't want all that direct sunlight going on top of everything and down here, you may notice that I've got a ton of bottles, and these are filled with water. So I've got two reasons for that. One, obviously, we're in a greenhouse, we're growing plants, we need water. Number two is water is a very good heat sink, so it can help absorb the sunlight and the heat that's generated in here, and then slowly release it at night. There's probably not enough in here to actually do a huge dent in things, but I'm doing everything I can, because I don't have a lot of space in this small greenhouse. So you got to maximize it wherever you can and try to get that heat out of it. It is completely an unheated greenhouse. So I, I never put any heat in here just because I mostly use it to cheat the seasons. I'm not really actively growing a whole lot in the wintertime or like in the middle of the summer. In the middle of the summer, it's scorching in here. And it's really hard to keep anything growing as far as plants go. Back on the other side of the greenhouse, I've got some tubs in here and these mostly store some other pots let me pull one of those out and show you what i've got in here well i've got some peat in this one 
But under that, I've got some of these. These are more of the core pots. You can see how those are made. And what I love about these things is that the roots will go right on through this shell here and have absolutely no problem whatsoever growing on. They don't biodegrade really fast, but in about two or three years they're gone. And usually what happens is I'll put them in the garden, plant stuff directly in there. The roots grow all over the place. Then I come back later to clean things up and I still have some of that pot left behind. In that which case, then I can toss it in the compost bin or give it to the birds because the birds like to use it as nesting material. These pots work really well inside of 1020 flats. You can get three of them on a side and about six deep, so a total of 18 per flat. On the inside here, what I usually do is I have the hold flat, like I told you earlier, and then the non-hold flat in the bottom. And that way, when I am no longer needing to keep them in the greenhouse, maybe I'm moving into the garden where I've got more overhead irrigation happening, I can just use the hold flat at that point so they have good drainage and don't get soggy on the bottoms. So here you can see I've got the core pots as well. They come in eight parts. What I don't like about these so much is that they are a little harder to pull apart and separate. So like say you have eight little plants started in here, you'll actually need a pair of scissors or a knife or something here to easily pull these apart without tearing them. Um, that's one disadvantage, but they're sturdier than say a peat pot would be. Um, but I do like them, they do biodegrade. And I've used them for several years and pretty good thing. Another thing that I like to do is save some of these juice bottles and I cut the bottom off. Those I've got stored in here for right now, but I also use them for propagating plants. If I need to keep a humidity dome, they fit over top of certain size pots just perfectly. Like a six inch pot I think is perfect match for one of these going over top of it. You can take the top off as needed for better ventilation and they work pretty well, especially if you need something to get rid of a lot of those waste bottles that your kids are producing all the time like ours are. So you see right here we've got two openings in the ceiling area for ventilation. There's one on that side and one on this side. And what I've done now is I've just kind of got them tied to this little bungee type cord um, because I don't have something that's going to automatically open and shut this. Right now I've got it manual. That costs extra and I just never bothered to do anything with it. I did notice that if these were loose at all, the wind would pop it up, blow inside, and then I would lose a panel. That's usually when it happened. When that wind had a way to get inside, something will pop off. So that's why I keep the doors closed and keep the windows closed unless it's kind of that time of year where you really need to have them open for good ventilation. Here in the winter time, it can stay shut pretty much all winter. And in the, once the summer happens, I leave the door open for the most part. When I originally put this up, I bought this insulated panel and put along the back side. It's a four foot by eight foot long insulated panel and it had the reflective material on the exterior of it and you can tell it's in really poor shape now. Um, and what the purpose of that was to keep it from losing heat on the north side because this is set along the north side of the greenhouse and I'm not getting any light from there anyway. So the reflective material was helping bounce a little bit more light back in that might have been lost had it just been regular clear panels. Uh, it's helped a little bit over the years. I don't know what the significant impact would be or if it even was a significant impact. Uh, but I do think it has helped some to keep more of the heat inside this greenhouse. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of the greenhouse. Uh, the Harbor Freight greenhouse has been a pretty decent one. I think I originally purchased it for $250. Uh, and that was about eight years ago. It was on one of their sales. And it's held up pretty well over the years. It's not perfect. It's not airproof. It's got holes in it all over the place. Um, and it's got some issues. So it's not perfect. You could probably build one better yourself. Uh, but for somebody who just wants one in a whole kit where they can kind of put it together real quickly, it really doesn't take that long. I think you could probably do it in 24 hours to 48 hours just over the course of a weekend. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a like if you did, and let me know if you have any questions. Always drop that in the comments. I'm happy to help. So I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. Catch you next time.